VFIO is back and on the Level 1 Linux channel, and I want you to help us out. So I've got some really amazing news. This Velocity Microsystem is a Threadripper Pro system, and it is based on Velocity Micro's workstation platform. They've agreed to let me borrow this system to use it for uh, a little bit of mad science here, which is great. If you want to check out this system, there's a full review of it. Definitely do that. This is based around the ASRock Creator WRX80. It has fast DDR4 memory. It's a really solid platform. This is an impressive, lightweight enclosure that they have it in. You know, it's a... It, it, sort of feels like the old school Lee and Lee type case. It's got good airflow. It's a pretty good design. It's a pretty solid workstation. We're going to be using Linux on it, and we're going to be using a whole host of six and 7,000 series GPUs for VFIO. Because there, there might be some reset problems and things like that, but it's actually a more complicated situation with VFIO and pass through and everything else like that. But first, you may be wondering, what the heck is VFIO? VFIO, or GPU pass-through as it's sometimes called, is something that I've been working on for literally a decade, on and off. I think it's the future of computing. It is very, very important uh, to be able to run pretty much anything you want on your computer and to be able to reach into the past and <laughs> run things uh, in the past when this video is super old and we're talking about all this nice new modern stuff as if it is vintage and antiquated. You see, right now, you can do some cool stuff. Like, you can go to the Internet Archive and it does some machine hardware emulation and then you can boot up Windows 3.1 or OS2 Warp or whatever in your browser. That's really cool stuff. But there's a lot that we have right now on our existing machines that is legacy from the past. And in order to support legacy from the past, it sort of slows down modern computing. Enter VFIO or virtualization. I'm sure that you've heard of virtual machines. You run a virtual machine and anything in the virtual machine is kind of sandboxed and you can emulate whatever you need. 32-bit applications running in a 64-bit context. Okay, that's not virtualization at all. The platform supports that. But there is talk of removing some of the 32-bit extensions at which time you'll need to do some software magic in order to make that work. VFIO takes that a step further. It lets you access real physical hardware, namely GPUs, but also networking cards and everything else, inside a virtual machine. So you could have a, a computer within a computer as a software construct that can access real physical hardware. Now the holy grail is we get to a future where you can run multiple operating systems, multiple complete software packages on a single GPU. And we're there in the enterprise, but we're not really there as far as desktop goes. And the utility of that is really undersold. And, and in fact, I've been doing this so long and beating this drum for so long that there are detractors that just don't see the bigger picture and don't see the immediate utility of this. It's like, I can't see immediately what step two is, but the reality is if we have this, then people will go nuts doing all kinds of really creative, imaginative things that we haven't even thought of. The same way that happened with virtualization extensions. You see, almost before we had multi-core CPUs, Intel and other companies added extensions to their CPUs to help with virtualization. Actually, Intel ran into a lot of problems moving from you know the x86 architecture to the 286 architecture to the 386 architecture, the move from 16 bits in your computer to 32 bits in your computer with the i386. Uh, a little bit of a headache. And there were extensions that were added that helped processes uh, think of their memory and address space um, sort of monolithically without considering what the entire rest of the system does. And there's a little bit of overlap with how that's handled as far as virtual machines go. But with this technology, you can run Linux in a sandbox under Windows. You can run Windows in a sandbox under Linux. You can run Windows and OS2 Warp and Linux in a sandbox under something else. You could have something that hasn't been invented yet that's managing and supervising all of this. I think this is the future of computing. One, because trust and safety, and two, because computing is so ubiquitous to all of our lives that this level of isolation between our applications is, is going to be necessary, as we've seen time and time again. 
you know, commercial companies can't be trusted to respect your privacy and respect the data on your machine. There's always going to be the temptation to mine your data or mine your location or mine whatever, depending on whatever it is. If you sandbox those applications inside virtual machines, it gives you a layer of security and protection and everything else that is very desirable as a computer user. As you move your data around, it's like I want to literally isolate all of my banking stuff behind encryption and, and firewall. It's the only tool that we have in our toolbox for safe and secure computing. And we, we keep not learning that lesson over and over again, but that's, you know, sort of grand vision type stuff. And all I'm really concerned about right now is just being able to play games and do fun, interesting stuff with a GPU in a virtual machine in Linux. And that is what VFIO is. That is what VFIO gives us. So to recap, what would be really amazing to have is when you've got a really amazing fire breathing GPU like the 6950 XT, whether that's from XFX or ASRock or PowerColor or AMD themselves or Sapphire or whoever, that this fire breathing GPU, I can use it in Linux and I can use it in Windows at the same time. I could have a machine learning job running at the same time that I'm doing transcoding at the same time that I'm doing gaming. GPUs are not really good at multitasking. They're not really good at juggling a lot of different things going on in the background. Uh, there's There've been stories about fun screw ups like that, like Apex Legends was using the GPU so, so completely that when you wanted to do streaming with Apex Legends, it would cause very bad things to happen as far as streaming goes because there wasn't enough GPU horsepower available to do both streaming and playing the game, which is just silly. That was just bad programming. That wasn't even an architectural thing. And so I think that extensions for hardware like this should be as ubiquitous as the extensions that have been in our CPU since time immemorial. But here we are in 2023, and from my point of view, it seems like it has taken the entire lifetime of computing to have that feature in consumer grade stuff. So while we wait on that capability to be able to run multiple operating systems at the same time under a single GPU, we can add a second GPU to our system, which is pretty awesome. And this first video is really kind of a call to arms. Have you been using VFIO? Do you use VFIO? Would you benefit from the ability to run multiple operating systems seamlessly and with low headache and assuming there are no GPU reset bugs and this is an actual tested use case, then now is the time to make our voices heard. Not just because I'm doing a cool giveaway with AMD. Yeah, it turns out that AMD and Corsair are sponsoring another video that is going to be about this where we're going to give away a 7950X based system that I build around Corsair components and this XFX 6950XT and uh, some other GPUs and some other hardware and some, we'll cover that video, don't worry, but you're gonna have to look at the level one text forums for some details about that and this whole project because this is gonna be a pretty big monumental thing. I've already started a new how-to, so if you have been following the VFIO space for a while, you know that generally the 6000 series cards are, are pretty solid, and the 7000 series cards uh, have been a little bit more of a headache for GPU pass-through and virtualization and, and, and that sort of thing. The reality, though, is that those cards don't have the same kind of reset and other bugs that we experienced with Vega. There are some rough edges around this use case, but generally it is possible to work around those rough edges on the 7000 series GPUs, at least on the AMD platform, but I am at the time that I'm shooting this video because this is pretty early in the process. I think I can work around it on the Intel side as well. So what that means is that for 7000 series GPUs, most of the problems that you will trip over with those GPUs in this use case are really down to the platform and configuration. You see, PCI Express is undergoing a lot of changes under the hood in order to be able to support PCI Express 5 and uh, things like disaggregation. This is a new cool enterprise technology where your, your compute and all of the PCIe lanes that your CPUs provide in your this cloud of compute in your data center is connected via PCI Express to literally everything else. Like we just eschew the networking technology and everything else and literally just have everything talk 
to everything else over PCI Express. Not just peripherals, but also mixing and matching. So this cloud of compute and a cloud of storage and a cloud of GPUs are all interconnected on this huge PCI Express fabric. And the fabric controller says, okay, this cluster of CPUs needs uh, these GPUs and these storage devices and these network cards down here. And that really works well. Uh, see also what companies like Liquid are doing and everybody else. And so in building out those use cases and building out those use cases inside supercomputers that are you know being deployed as fast as they can be built, it's trickling down little changes that create some rough edges for us to deal with. And that's why we're looking at this, this kind of thing. So I started a how-to on the Level 1 Text Forum that goes through some of this and the BIOS settings that you're gonna to wanna to look for if you're doing this. So if you're having problems with a 7000 series reset, now is the time to either point me toward somebody that has a reproducible issue with the 7000 series GPU, because I also have the ear of AMD a little bit here. And so again, make your voice heard, VFIO, virtualization, all this, this background. The reason I'm giving you this background video on the level one Linux channel. Second thing, if it's working for you, let us know and let us know what is working for you and your BIOS version and everything else. Things like uh, PCIe AER and making sure IOMMU is enabled and not on auto and not using things like um, the PCIe ACS override. Those things can get you into trouble. With where we are in 2023 with modern hardware like X670 and to a lesser extent B550 and X570, you should be able to configure the BIOS on most boards so that you can run all of the stuff that you need for proper IOMMU isolation. It's not enough to just enable IOMMU anymore. You also have to tell it that you want the advanced PCIe features. Not every BIOS exposes those options. Not every board has those options. You also have to understand if the slots on your motherboard come from the CPU, like if it's PCI Express lanes that are connected directly to the CPU, or if it's PCI Express lanes connected through the chipset. I know some people don't care to run you know, their host GPU through their chipset or they want to use their iGPU for their virtual machine, but an add-in GPU for the Linux machine. Everybody's got a different use case. And some of those use cases are a little more tricky than other use cases. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to cover all of them in the FAQ and the how-to, but I've noticed that, you know, like on Reddit slash RVFIO, given the recent Reddit kerfuffle and the acceleration of the VFIO community and blah, 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 I need to do a little work here to try to bring everything back together because some of the enthusiasm has, has gone away, it seems, and some of the documentation is getting a little bit stale. So it's like, okay, let's bring it together. Let's get the documentation good to go. Let's, let's do this. Early on, I had some problems with 7000 series GPUs and with BIOS updates and Agiza updates and being able to load the BIOS for the GPU from the virtualization side instead of relying on the cards on BIOS, which is another annoyance, but something we can work around in software, then uh, there is a path forward here. And this video is not the path forward. This video is just called arms. So don't, don't get ahead of yourself. Be like, he didn't tell me anything that was immediately actionable. If you want the immediately actionable stuff, you're going to have to go to the level one forum. It's not going to be in a video format. I'm sorry, but we're going to talk about cool stuff that we're doing. And also reminder, Jeff, Looking Glass, the Looking Glass project has phenomenal updates from the last little bit. Signed drivers for monitor emulation and the monitor driver actually does the uh, the memory buffer pass through from your host, uh, from your guest to your host. Yeah, you can, it's, it's a thing almost pretty much sort of kinda where you load the Looking Glass driver for the monitor, the virtualized monitor. And that is able to scrape the frame buffer and forward it to the host, which is the coolest thing ever at ridiculous speeds with pointer sync and the best performance that you've ever seen on modern platforms. Again, this is why we're going to give away a 16 core monster system with two GPUs, two two terabyte hard drives, thanks to Corsair, plus also the 512 gigabyte operating system SSD, plus the memory. It's basically the, the, the ultimate system from Corsair and AMD partners like XFX, ASRock, and some others. So 
Very, very exciting stuff. Look for that thread in the level one forum, link below for this community project that we're putting together. I wanna get my ducks in a row with VFIO. I wanna hear how you're using it, so on and so forth. I myself have been using my VFIO system based around Threadripper Pro. It's a, it's a built system very similar to this. I did that wood grain video like years ago and it has been rock solid. It has done everything that I've thrown at it. I've passed through different kinds of GPUs. I've swapped my GPUs around. It has been absolutely rock solid. I even did the old how-tos where you can run your, your Microsoft Office applications seamlessly. I've been using that for years. And it works great and it's awesome. And I really do think it's the future of computing and also being able to separate my concerns in kind of a quasi secure way, secure-ish. And philosophically, I like being there. Definitely not as secure as something purpose-built like the Cubes project, but philosophically, it's kind of the same way. If you have never heard of Cubes, you should definitely check out the Cubes project and watch some of their stuff and watch maybe some of my, well, my old videos on Cubes are pretty outdated at this point. But Cubes is another really fun, awesome project in this in this same kind of a vein. It's an offshoot. But let's not get distracted by that. Let's stay focused on making the VFIO experience a truly first-class experience again. Because we were so close. So close. Also, I'll give you one other tidbit. These ARC GPUs, the A770, for example, which is becoming a first-class experience in Linux. I've had this for a while. It has not been super fabulous in Linux but this GPU has come a long way on the Windows side of things. In China, there is a, mm, a hack, let's call it, that will turn the A770 into its data center equivalent, which supports a multi-tenant GPU technology called SRIOV. So it is possible to turn an A770 into a two-tenant SRIOV where each one has eight gigabytes of memory on a 16 gigabyte card. So you can run this GPU with a guest operating system, giving it eight gigabytes of VRAM, and you run your virtual machine and your host operating system off of a single GPU. And that is possible with the A770, but you do have to modify the card. And a lot of these cards, I mean, they really, that's, these have almost 99.8% complete single root IO virtualization support. And I'm trying to figure out how I can show you how to do that without mm, tripping over some landmines because there's some landmines there. And that's that's all I can say. Maybe, I, maybe just telling you that is enough that somebody can figure it out and connect the dots. I don't know, we'll see. But an A770 with SRIOV support, it may turn out that Intel is the first company to offer this, intentionally or unintentionally. Actually, I think there are beta versions of that card that have SRIOV enabled, and I'm not sure if that was accidental or not, or just leftovers from the fact that the original, the commercial version of that card was built for, I guess, Tencent or somebody to be able to play mobile games online or something like that. There's, a, there's somebody in our community that worked on that project, apparently, and sent me some info so that's sort of interesting uh but that's a story for another day i'm on to this level one vfio is back level one linux hello and welcome we're gonna get this done we're gonna put in a lot of work and it's gonna be really something thanks again to velocity micro for sending this system out i've got a link below you should check out if you are interested in just you know point and click and buy a workstation and get a workstation you know you, know, you don't want to diy it you can spend less money if you DIY it, but if you're buying it for work, you want a support contract, it's cheaper than Dell, HP, Lenovo, etc. And it is a truly a workstation because Threadripper Pro. Threadripper Pro is a workstation platform. The 7950X is an enthusiast platform with two GPUs, and we're going to give that one away. So check that out. That's And that's going to be something that I build. But if you want something that has 32 or 64 cores and a ridiculous amount of horsepower, mm, Threadripper Pro is still killing it. Even though it's, these systems are a couple years old, this is the fastest workstation CPU you get out of the box. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums, working endlessly on this VFI thing. Oh, I've already put in a scary amount of work. This video was supposed to be out kind of a while ago. Sorry, I'm working on it. Things are improving. All right, I'm signing out and I'll see you there.